everyone, good morning and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ashley and here on my channel I talk all about embroidery, applique, Etsy, and running your own small business from home. So today I'm going to bring you guys along as I'm doing a couple sets of Christmas pajamas. I'm a little late to the game this year, it's already December 1st. I bought these a long time ago with the intention of actually using them as samples to sell. That's long gone now, um, but I'm going to go ahead and do them for my daughter and then if they should offer the same prints in... Um, next year or subsequent years, I'll just be able to use them then. So the first one I have is this little red shirt and it comes with these little pants that have milk, cookies, and Santa on. They're it. These are from Love That Cotton. Um, you do need to have a wholesale account with them to get wholesale pricing. Otherwise, they're kind of expensive. Wholesale pricing, they're in line with every other blank company. Um, there is a design out there that I will share here shortly that um, is made to coordinate um, with these pajamas perfectly. I'm going to be using that on this set of pajamas. They do also come with a little fabric swatch if you are using something um, that you can utilize that with. So like a big letter applique or something. That's always helpful. And then the other pair a little bit more generic. They're just another little red top. And then they have green and red striped pants. Um, now these pajamas, they are made to be compliant. Um, so to do that, they have to be made where they're snug fitting. That being said, I always order a size up for my own little girl, um, just to fit over her little arms and hands and legs. Um, looks like the pants are, she's got plenty of room in. They're going to be plenty long on her, but it's usually the tops and the sleeves we have to size up for. Um, so if your kids in between sizes, definitely size up. Um, they'll still be snug and compliant, but, um, that way they fit a little bit better. Okay, I have my designs picked out now and I'm ready to go. That always takes longer than I think because I knew what I was going to do with these. I'm going to do the coordinating design. It has a Santa, the milk, and the cookie. I had bought the fill stitch version, but it's not quite big enough for what I want. So I went back and purchased the applique version. It's a blanket stitch, which I'm, I'm comfortable doing, but I don't use it regularly. It's definitely not my favorite, but I will make it work for this. Um, I'm going to use some and pull in some of this light blue color on it. And then I'm going to use one of Joy Kate's designs um, fonts to go with it as well. Um, I am keeping these designs kind of neutral, even though I'm making these for my own little girl, um, just so I can use the pictures and advertise in the future. I'm probably going to fold them down so they don't look like pajamas, like for the picture. Um, so I can always market them on just a plain red shirt next year too, if they would not have the same um, exact pajamas next year. Um, so for this one, I'm going to try out a sketch. Um, I'm always a little leery on doing sketch on color, just um, worried about the colors showing through, but it's super cute. It's again from Joy Kate Designs. Um, it's a Christmas cookie, and then I'm going to use that same Benjamin um, sketch font on this top as well. Again, kind of keeping it a little bit gender neutral um, so I can um, increase the market. These are neutral pajamas, so I think that will work great. And that way, like I said, I can market it towards um, girls or boys on regular shirts next year as well. All right, since the designs, I'm going to be, I'm putting these on a size 2T pajama. Those are a lot more narrow um, in width than like a regular 2T shirt, um, even girl shirt or unisex. Um, so getting a mighty hoop in there would be a little tight. I'm not comfortable with that. I definitely don't want to ruin a, a kind of expensive pair of pajamas if they, if I'm not paying attention and something gets stitched through the back. Um, so I'm going to use my fast frames. That's my preference on slightly smaller garments and things that are just a little tighter. Um, I can get a bigger design um, on those than if I was using just a smaller mighty hoop. So I'm choosing to use a five by seven design. It's almost seven inches wide for both of them. And I'm going to use my, these are an eight by eight mighty hoop. Or mighty, these are these are fast frames, eight by eight fast frame. Um, the seven by seven would be too close to the edge. Um, the seven by seven, you don't get a full seven inch stitch field. Um, it's closer to like six and a half. Same with the eight by eight, it's closer to like seven and a half because you don't want to um, be hitting the edges, top or bottom, in any direction with your presser foot. Um, so I like to keep it at least a half an inch, preferably two thirds of an inch smaller than the maximum size of the hoop on fast frames. Um, so five by seven design is seven inches wide. I'm using the eight by eight fast frames. I prefer to 
use masking tape and tape my tearaway stabilizer. Um, this specific tearaway stabilizer that I prefer is from World Widener. Um, they're available on Amazon uh, for about the same price or their website. I just, uh, I usually buy from their website um, directly. Um, the other thing I use on kids shirts is poly mesh. I don't, I do not use a traditional cutaway. Now, since these are not going to be for a customer, they're going to be for my own little girl. I'm just going to go ahead and take this tag off. If I was selling these, I'd probably leave it on, but I'm just going to take it out of the way. It's one less thing for me to worry about. Um, I do buy pre-cuts of my poly mesh stabilizer. I buy them in, um, these are seven by six, no, they're eight by eight. These are eight by eight pieces. And then I also buy 10 by 10 that I use on my bigger shirts with my Mighty Hoops. Um, I do also buy six by six that I use on my jackets. Um, but, and then I do keep a 10 or 12 inch roll of it on hand too for larger projects like um, adult sized front sweatshirts or jacket backs, things like that. Um, but for the most part, I use pre-cuts in that. So I'm going to go ahead and I like to just fold it over and hand press it to find my center. This with the poly mesh inside, this gives me just enough. You still have to be careful that you can see it. Um, I could also put my dot stickers on here if I was having a, um, a real hard time seeing where that center was. It's hard to see on camera. Well, actually, no, I think you guys can see it pretty well. There's a nice center crease there that's going to flatten out well. Um, and not be s as prominent as it would be if I was like ironing that in or heat pressing that in. I don't like doing that if I can avoid it. Um, I just do it with my hand pressing. I'm going to go ahead and let's find the center of my hoop. The hoops have, are these mighty, sorry, fast frames, um, have a little indent at the top and the bottom. And I use those to line it up with the frame. There's a little indent here um, to help you line those up. So once I get the center aligned, then I just smooth it out from there. I do go ahead and use these sewing clips that I buy on Amazon. Those will be linked below too. Um, just to kind of secure everything in place, make sure nothing shifts or moves, especially when I'm like putting the shirt on and off the machine, especially if I'm doing applique, things like that. I just gives it a, just a tiny bit extra security. Um, I do also use, I didn't mention while I was using it, um, adhesive spray. I know a lot of people are against adhesive spray, but this is the best I found and most economical price wise. Um, you do have to have a, you can find this other places. You can find this at all stitch or other embroidery supply places, but you'll pay a lot more for it for a single can. If you get a wholesale account directly with Dunold shown here, these are super cheap. Um, I buy a case of 12 of them at a time and it's around, I think a hundred dollars. So I think it's a hundred dollars for free shipping. So it usually qualifies for free shipping. That's the cheapest I've found. They are big cans, even the small, this is a small can size and this is still bigger than the, um, other adhesive sprays that people recommend. So this one's already, again, this one's going to be a sketch design. It goes with these, um, green and red pants. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this one stitching while I'm working on the other because the other one's going to take a lot more of my um, direct attention. It's a bean stitch, app bean stitch? No, it's a blanket stitch applique, but you trim it as you go, like piece by piece, similar to what you do with a bean stitch. So it's a little bit more um, labor intensive in my opinion. So I will get this one started. It can be finishing up while I'm working on this one. So here's the cookie design. It's a sketch design. It's like a gingerbread cookie, a Christmas cook, you know, Christmas tree cookie and a snowman cookie, like a, kind of almost like a, like a decorated, um, sugar cookie is kind of the concept, um, that I'm going to put on these striped pajamas. Um, since I'm using fast frames, I'm going to excuse on my thread mess. Um, I always hoop them so that the bottom of the shirt goes in towards the machine. The neckline's out on my fast frames, so that means I need to make sure I rotate my design on my machine. So I rotate it 180 degrees, or 90 degrees twice, um, and this is where I set my colors. I go ahead and click the thread here with the palette. I do not let the machine assign them manually later. 
That's again just a personal preference. I like to uh, make sure and know exactly what I'm doing. Um, so the first one, it's going to do the gingerbread in a brown. It's going to do the cookie bases in a tan color. That's good. Um, the next is the green. That's fine. Now, for some reason, when I save these in Sewit Pro, a lot of times black doesn't save correctly. I do have to manually change that. That's fine. Um, next is, it's not recognizing red. It's trying to put it as like a coral color. Um, yellow's fine for the star on the tree. Orange for the snowman nose. We're going to do the same green as the fill stitch part for the name. And then the outline of that is going to be in white. That'll um, help contrast against this red um, shirt. So that's all good. I'm going to end edit. Um, so next it takes me to kind of what I call like the alignment um, page. So I click this button down here with the need two needles. Um, last time I used the machine, I had been looking at the far, the alignment of the far left side of the design. I'm going to look at the, well, it, for this, it's going to be the top, but it's the part closest to you. Um, cause I want to make sure one that's centered on my shirt and it should be with the fast frames. Uh, but I always double check and then I might move it down here. So it's closer to the neckline. All right. So I have quite a bit of space here between the neckline where it would be. Um, the only downside of these 10 needles is they don't have a laser like the brother and baby look six needles. But honestly, if you go to commercial machines, most of them don't have it either. So it's not a big deal to me. I've never had one with it. So it's, it's something I don't miss, I guess. Um, so I'm going to use the arrows here to move my design. I'm going to move it down or I guess up how, depending how you look at it. I like mine about two finger widths below for kids shirts, two finger widths below the neckline. And um, that's pretty close. What I do is I just kind of eyeball it to about where I want it. And then, like I said, I don't have the laser. Um, I know I'm plenty far away from my frame. So I hit lock in the scissor that drops my needle down. I can see exactly where the top center of the design is going to be. I can make sure that's in line with the little notch. Um, and then I can see exactly how far it's going to be from the neckline. That's exactly where I want it. I'm going to go ahead and click sewing. And then it is going to prompt me to change my thread colors. Um, I already had tan assigned on needle nine. It's already on there. Um, I'm not going to need to change tan. I'm not going to use it, but I leave these four center ones. They're the center ones on the 10 needles. I leave those locked in because they're ones I frequently use. Um, if I'm doing a design with many, many colors, I will sometimes unlock those and change them, but they're harder to change for me. So I leave those locked in and don't change those frequently. I just change the outside um, three on each side. So I'm going to go ahead and change those um, one, two, three, and eight with the colors I need. Okay, this is all ready to go. I have all the threads done and re-threaded now. I'm gonna go ahead and click start. And while this is starting to stitch out for you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and hoop the other shirt. It's the exact same process I went over, so I'm gonna get, let you guys watch this for a little bit.
All right, so I'm on the final two pieces that need trimmed. Sometimes when they don't overlap, I just go ahead on these ones like this, like bean stitch, blanket stitch, I just go ahead and do the next step so then I can trim it all at once. So that's why you didn't see those separate steps. Um, so after this first cookie, the one, um, I kind of changed up my plan of action. I went ahead and let the finishing um, blanket stitch stitch on each of these and then I'm kind of going back and trimming them like I would a... Um, this is actually a zigzag, not a blanket. That's interesting. Um, just notice that I didn't catch that on the actual file, but that's fine. Um, so I'm actually trimming these more like a bean stitch than a regular applique. Like I said, I probably would have went ahead and trimmed this one a little bit closer, but I didn't pay attention. That's, that's a zigzag since the rest is blanket. Anyway, it's not a big deal. I'm just going to go ahead and trim it like I would a bean stitch. Um, maybe a little bit closer though. That's just, again, a personal preference. I'm getting kind of close to it without compromising or jeopardizing actually um, cutting those stitches because I don't want it to, um, the actual thread to unravel at all. I'm going to go ahead and trim these. Um, I think this came out pretty well. Um, you did see me kind of switch up things as I went from my original plan. That's the way it usually happens. I start out with a plan, but um, I'm flexible as I kind of see how things are turning out and what I think will pair well together. Um, okay, so these did overlap just a tiny bit. Not a big deal. Um, I do also have the sketch stitch one done, so I'm going to put this back on the machine. It's got a few details left to stitch out on it like the Santa nose and face. Um, and then of course the name below. Um, and once that is done, um, then I will show you the finished products for both. And I will go ahead and show you how I'm gonna do some um, product photography on those. Um, I, like I said, I, I'm too late to offer these this year, but I do want to go ahead and get photos. Um, I'm gonna stage them both as pajama sets with the pants themselves and then um, also stage it as just a folded red shirt. So um, should these exact pajamas not be offered next year, I can still offer this design just on a plain red shirt. They're never gonna know that I, you know, I, I had it folded down and it was actually on pajamas initially. Um, I just wanna make sure I have both options um, for flexibility. Always make sure you take photos of your things folded too, especially if it's on something super, um, um, specific um, just for sourcing of future items so just here on my cutting board before I take actual pictures here's the finished products I definitely like how they came out um, I did make some last minute changes again on this one um, after seeing how this came out I actually I love the two-tone um, but I had chose to do light blue in the center and then white around the edge and just knowing how white and light blue stitch out together I knew that you were gonna completely lose the light blue inside. Um, it'd be overpowered by that white outer. Um, I probably would have preferred to do white inside, blue outside, but I'd already had that stitched when I kinda was like, oh, that's not gonna work. So um, I stopped my machine before it did the outside stitching part, um, cause it's a separate step, and changed it to blue just so it'd be a little bit bolder. And that pulls in a little bit more of the blue from the pants that way as well. Um, so next I'm gonna take these over. I've already heat pressed these, um, put the tender touch on the back, and like lint rolled them. They're good to go now. Um, this one might need to sit for a few more minutes. If you ever heat press or iron red garments, you know that um, the heat kind of distorts the color for a little while, but it comes it comes back. Um, it's something to do with the moisture and the, and the fabric content. Um, so I might wait a few minutes on that one. I'll just photograph this, this set first um, so that one can kind of um, regain that color. Um, but I'm gonna take these over to my light box and I will kind of give a demonstration on how I stage these. Um, I'm going, like I mentioned before, I'm gonna stage them as pajamas like this, um, maybe not laid out like this, but as a pajama set, um, as well as fold this shirt up so you can't even tell it's a pajama shirt. Take these away completely. That way, if for some reason I'm not able to get these pajamas next year, I can still at least market the shirt or I can um, take the design um, on a red shirt and put it on a different set of red pajamas next year, like Photoshop it in. Um, cause since it's an actual stitch out, it'll look fine. I can just kind of blend those edges, make it look good. Um, I've done that before too. Um, 
So we'll just see how that goes. We'll see if these are offered next year. Again, these are made from, or these are purchased from Love That Cotton. It's lovethatcotton.com. I can try to remember to link that below. Um, they are kind of pricey unless you have a wholesale account, then they're just in line with the other blank companies um, and their pricing on pajamas or, you know, I think what, 14, $15? I don't know exactly, don't quote me on that, but they're in that range um, like most are. So these are good quality, they're nice and stretchy. They are snug fitting, of course, since they're cotton pajamas, made to be compliant um, and all that. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna photograph these. Okay, so we're over at my light box now. You'll notice it's kind of stuck tightly in between two of my um, drawer sets. Um, over here on the left, I keep a lot of extra props here. So you uh, don't necessarily see it, but I keep florals on the top. I keep some like pants and stuff I can use as props and ruffle shorts, ruffle bottoms. Um, and next one, I've got a bunch of like hair bows in all different colors. Um, I also keep bead sets. See. bead sets like this most of these are like from Hobby Lobby or Joann's um, I also keep some felt um, like be bead sets I don't know garlands is that what it's called um, I have a few actual like little Christmas ornaments that I picked up at like the dollar store um, I can use with Christmassy stuff um, I have ribbon a lot of people like to use ribbon just twirled around um, their items uh, some of the digitizers that I've test stitched for in the past like that. It's not really my preference, but I have stuff if I need to use it. Um, and then I've got some holiday specific stuff. I've got a bag of different, you know, just little Christmas knickknacks, teeny tiny ornaments, different ribbons, trims. Easter, I've got things like little fabric carrots. These ones I love using for Easter stuff or spring things. Apparently I have some little leaves for autumn, fall stuff. Um, just the little things like that. And then the bottom ones are just extra thread. Um, this is what I've been using this year for a lot of my um, Christmassy stuff. So it's, I don't wanna completely remove this away, but it's actually three different pieces. It's this just greenery with these white cream looking beads. And then I have um, these two picks as well. I think most of this is from Hobby Lobby, I don't know, it could be Joann's, but either way, I just catch them when they're on sale and like to use those. It just um, gives a little 3D and dimension to your items. And this works well for kids items, boys, girls, adult, in my opinion. I mean, it's a li little less than floral. I like to try to avoid glitter because I don't want to get glitter all over stuff. So that's kind of the only thing I really try to avoid. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up my light box. I shoot with my phone in a square orientation straight down through here. Um, and my phone has, I can't show it on the screen because I'm recording with it right now, but it gives a grid and shows you like if you need to level out and stuff like that so you can get that direct straight down picture. You can definitely use a camera, um, whichever. Um, it's gonna be bright and then the camera should adjust here. All right, so I have two backdrops in there and you see I already have props in there from last time. Um, this one's just silver and just a little bow. Um, it was probably a Christmas girl shirt I did last. Um, I prefer this dark wood backdrop. I feel like I have better control of the actual colors. Um, I also do keep a white, oops, try not to get stuck on the top, white um, wood backdrop too. Um, but I have a little bit more problems with my colors either being too cool or too warm looking color wise. Um, so I like this wood one. I don't have that problem. So now my front of my um, light box does open up, but I actually prefer just to open, un velcro it and open it from the top and reach straight down. And that's, I'm tall, that's my preference. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this first one in here and styled and then I'll show you exactly what that looks like um, through the viewfinder. This is take number one of um, this cookie set. I need to just, I've got a piece of dust on there I need to get out. Um, I'm gonna do it without props as the um, pajama set. So I styled it so you can see it's long sleeve. It has um, the green cuffs. I tucked the pants kind of underneath it, but I did make sure to put out um, down here on the bottom, you can see that um, it has a, the blue or the green cuff there at the bottom of the pants too. I wanted to make sure that was styled and shown. 
um, so they know what they're getting exactly. And I'm gonna take a picture of that. And then what I'll do is I'll maybe add some props in so I have that option as well. Um, and then I'm just gonna remove the pants and do this as a folded shirt so you can't even see that it's on pajamas. Here's the next take of it. Here's what I did with some props. Like I said, that greenery I'd kind of mentioned. And then in my Christmas bag of props, I found these two little cookie cutters. They're kind of like a golden bronze color, but you really can't see that in the picture anyways. Um, so I just set those down there um, nicely and took some pictures like this. Um, so next I'm going to remove all props again and just fold the shirt. So here it is folded up with some props and then I'll just remove the props after that and take a plank blank picture like that too. Um, so I'm just consistent on the way I try to fold mine. I try to fold them as straight as possible. Um, I need to move the cookie cutter because it's kind of making it a little not straight on that one edge. Um, and then I always tilt mine to the left. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do that. It's just how I do it and I just try to be consistent. Thanks so much for joining me today while doing these pajama sets. I hope you found this useful and helpful. I think they came out super cute. We got these little ones with the cookies and Santa. And then again, the little Christmas cookie ones with just the stripey pants. Nice neutral designs. Hopefully that would work for boy or girl. Um, again, these pajamas are from Love That Cotton. You'll need a wholesale account to get a good price on them. And the designs, including the font, are all from Joy Kate Designs. I'll link that below using my referral link if you'd like to use it. Um, thanks so much for joining me today, and I, I will see you guys next time.